Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. And today we're answering the question, can you fine line tattoo with washes? All right. Okay, we're back. Now that that is over with. Can you fine line with washes? I don't know if I've answered this before, but somebody asked me this the other day and I just kind of looked at them and I said, yes, of course you can. Is it the most efficient way to do it? No, of course not. <clears throat> but it depends on what your skill is like, right? We're doing a fine line tattoo. We're trying to deposit the pigment in a very clean, concise manner with even saturation throughout at very specific depths. It is a fundamental aspect of tattooing. Running a bold line and running a fine line and having both of them peel up and look good is a fundamental aspect of this. If you can do one versus the other more effectively, that's on you. I mean, maybe we have different levels of, you know, whatever with this. And you know, say, well, that stuff, it's stupid and I don't think it works. It does. It's a tattoo, right? And maybe if you're comfortable with it and you knew that it would heal out well, then, then maybe you would feel differently about it. I don't know. But I mean, we do have people right now that are doing old school tattoos that are originally done with a three round with a 13. So I'm wondering how those are going to age, but that's just me. I guess I'm getting older, so maybe I'm cranky. And I have had a bit of a cold, so <clears throat> that's just what I do know. Um, so can it be done with washes? Yes, you can. Um, downfall to doing this stuff, a fine line, is that every time that you're gonna pass over top of this, right, if we have one pass that goes over, and two, three, maybe four, there's gonna be a greater chance of you fucking up the line, right? You're gonna end up doubling up, or you're gonna have a, a leak, or a blowout, or you're gonna have spots, or something. And it, unless you're really, really, really secure in your ability, to hit that thing dead nuts in the exact same motion every single time that you're going over it, you're gonna mess it up. I mean, even past it, every time you're gonna go over it, you're increasing the amount of scarring that could potentially happen, and you're damaging the skin more and more. So, it's, it takes such a level of skill, which is like, why I'm saying this is like a fundamental thing. Like when you have mastered fine line and you've mastered running bold lines, there's not a whole lot else that you really need to learn to do a tattoo, because you can fill an entire tattoo just with lines. Look at how printers work, right? I know they do dots and stuff now. <clears throat> Shut up. Um, <coughs> how can you approach this if this is the only way that you're going to be able to do it because you're not comfortable with it right now? Simple. You can use washes, but what you're going to do is a paint technique, right? We'll run in, we'll do our line the first time, and we're going to check for any type of deficiencies. All right, so we have a line, and we see, oh gosh, it sure is darker at the beginning than it was back here. Maybe I should have like dipped for more ink before I ran it. Well, no worries. We already know that we have trauma in here. And you, can, you should be able to, if you let this sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, visualize what the trauma is for that individual. And this is gonna change per person, right? <coughs> if you see a lot of swelling, right, and raising of the skin pretty quickly, there could be a few things going on. Maybe the person is you know, female if they're on their cycle, maybe they haven't had good sleep, maybe they're stressed, maybe they just got done with something else that's just causing something, maybe they drank heavily the night before, maybe they're nervous, maybe they have a nickel allergy, maybe they have sensitive skin or dermatographia, and we have so many things. But regardless of all those things, if we start seeing some of the swelling that's coming on, maybe there's some blood or something coming out, whatever. The signs in the skin are that it's becoming more worked. If you can find spots inside there where it looks like maybe it's a little bit crappy here, right? But like right next to it's totally fine. You can do a second pass in that section if you want to. And I'd say even with something like this, I'd say you could do a second. Doing a third, I would I would hazard against right off the hop because you're just going to end up damaging it. The more you damage the skin, the less structure that's there to actually hold the pigment and allow it to heal. So you're going to lose more during the heal, right? So if you get to a space like this and it's not done, you know what you do? You say, come back in three weeks and we'll finish her up. Number one, especially if you're using washes, because you're gonna have to build those tones and values, right? So you let it heal, you're gonna lose, you know, 60, 70% is actually gonna stay in the skin, so you lose 30, 40% of whatever you put in, which has already been diluted because it's a, wa uh, a wash. <clears throat> and if they're wanting it to have some type of like meat to it, you know, chutzpah, you're gonna have to go over it a few times to build those tones up. And paying attention each time that if you continually build that tone and don't allow the body time to heal because you've broken down the skin so much, the structural integrity of that skin is gonna accelerate the healing or accelerate the bleeding of that uh, during the healing and after. So it's gonna look more aged more quickly. So 
if you are in a spot and you need to do simple things, once again, simple fix, you can come in and do stipples. Now, this is very, very, very difficult because you've got a dead knot right in the inside of that line and you have to keep those dots spaced out relatively consistently. The goal is to put enough pigment in there that you're nearly blowing out the skin. And if you're doing it perpendicular to the line, you're not at an angle pushing something and doing dots like this. If you're either coming straight in and chasing it with a drop or coming in and like manually dropping down, which I actually prefer like, like those birds with the water, right? You just drop, 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 and just go back. Um, because the skin's already traumatized and because you're literally like carving into it, you'll end up shooting some of that pigment inside where those trauma lines are because it, one, the swelling and stuff that's happening on the outside is gonna kind of keep everything squished together. It's not gonna allow it, a lot of it to blow out, but the skin's already wounded here. So it's gonna be the path of least resistance for the stuff to go and flow through. Fun, easy fix. But realistically, <clears throat> if you're learning how to do fine line, start with washes. And if you get the person to come back two or three times, you're going to see it healed each time. You're going to learn a little bit more, right? Take notes. Think about the type of skin that you're working with, right? Age, complexion, tone, color, all that stuff, right? And see how it's, it's working. Pay attention to your tools. And when you're doing this, like... Pick one type of needle. I don't care about brands, they're stupid. But pick like one type of color, one needle, and then just keep using that same one until you feel comfortable with it. That way when you build up like a good base of knowledge, because you've done that so many times, when you change a product or you change something else, and hopefully by the time that you're changing it, you actually know what you're doing, you can automatically start to say, well, why isn't this looking like that? Is it something else? Because everyone will tell you when it's not working, just change your ink or change your needles or change your machine. And realistically, you just have to know that, no, you suck. You need to just get better. When you get better, it won't matter what type of ink or needles or machines that you use because you're gonna know how to tattoo. You should be able to do this with soot from the outside if you make a fire, some distilled water, grain alcohol, and a needle that you make by hand. That's how they used to do that sort of stuff. Sands the alcohol, of course, but and their stuff looked great. Look at Otzi, straight lines, man, crazy. Anyways, <clears throat> that's an answer for someone's question. I don't remember who it was, but if you did send it in, thank you so much. And I'm gonna just start coughing like a madman. So I'm gonna let you go for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.